أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وتم التسليم على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وعلى أصحابه الغر المايمين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم اجعلنا منهم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وعملا متقبلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين we begin as we always do by first and foremost praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, thanking him, acknowledging that he is the only one worthy and deserving of all praise and thanks. And we ask him to shower his most complete and abundant blessings and protection upon his noble prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, upon his noble family, his shining companions, and upon all of those that follow them until the end of time. And we ask Allah to include us from amongst them. We ask Allah to teach us what will benefit us, to benefit us through what he has taught us, and to increase us in knowledge and accepted actions. Ameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, everyone. Welcome to another episode of IOK's Beautifying Character series. Last week, we covered the praiseworthy quality of taysir, making things easy. And today, we will cover the opposite, ta'asir, making things difficult. Linguistically, the term ta'asir comes from the verb asara yu'asiru, which is derived from the root letters ain, seen, and ra. These root letters indicate toward a meaning of difficulty, harshness, severity, and constriction. Usr, the word that ta'asir comes from, is the linguistic opposite of yusr, ease, the word which we discovered last week. Usr can also mean something that is diminished depleted, lacking. Because when someone's life or circumstances or opportunities are diminished and lacking, that makes a person's life difficult and harsh. Technically, ta'asir is أَنْ يُشَدِّدَ الْإِنسَانُ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ أَوْ غَيْرِهِ فِي أَمْرِ الدِّينِ بِالزِّيَادَةِ عَلَى الْمَشْرُوعِ أَوْ فِي أَمْرِ الدُّنْيَا بِتَرْكِ الْأَيْسَرِ مَا لَمْ يَكُنْ إِثْمًا Ta'asir is for a person to be harsh and severe upon his or herself or upon another person in regards to matters of religion by going above what is legislated and also in matters of worldly life by refusing to do that which is easier as long as that easier option is not sinful. This definition shows us that making things difficult can be divided into making things difficult upon yourself and making things difficult on others. And it can also be divided into making things difficult in matters of religion and making things difficult in matters of this worldly life. And these two categories mix and match and give us four arenas in which ta'asir can exist. One, making things difficult on yourself in matters of religion. Two, making things difficult on yourself in matters of this life. 3. Making things difficult on others in matters of religion. And 4. Making things difficult on others in matters of this life. So let us go ahead and look at each of these four categories individually. Firstly, making things difficult on yourself in matters of religion. This is when a person decides to make Islam more intense than it actually is by going beyond the example of the Prophet وسلم, and what he used to do and doing that which is more physically taxing on the body with the assumption that the more painful something is, the more reward it will necessarily entail. Again, the concepts of ease and difficulty must be looked at holistically, looking first and foremost to the example of the Prophet did the Prophet وسلم, strive hard, put in his best efforts, and do things that were difficult and extremely taxing both physically and mentally? Yes, he definitely did. But the key is that he did not impose difficulty upon himself. He did not go out of his way to make something he had to do difficult. He did not shy away from difficulty when it came to good deeds. If a good deed was difficult, that difficulty did not prevent him from doing it. But he did not purposefully make that difficult good deed more difficult than it needed to be. 
Gleaning light from his example, we too should not shy away from good deeds simply because they're hard, difficult, inconvenient. If you are presented with an opportunity to do good, do it, even if it's hard. But the behavior that we must refrain from is taking that good deed and purposefully making it more difficult than it needs to be. Purposefully putting ourselves in difficult and intense situations and routines because we have this assumption that the more intense something is, the better. Once the Prophet ﷺ did something while acting upon a concession, meaning the original ruling was something, but another ruling was given to make that action easier. For example, how we do not have to fast during Ramadan while traveling. We do not know what concession is being discussed in this story. We just know that the Prophet ﷺ did an action while acting on a concession. Some of the other companions didn't want to take the concession. They stayed away from the easier option, perhaps because they thought they were too pious to take the easier road. They thought that they were too strong to need a concession. This information about some people refusing to take the concession reached the Prophet ﷺ, and he said, مَا بَالُ أَقْوَامٍ يَتَنَزَّهُونَ عَنِ الشَّيْءِ أَصْنَعُهُ فَوَاللَّهِ إِنِّي أَعْلَمُهُمْ بِاللَّهِ وَأَشَدُّهُمْ لَهُ خَشْيَةً what is wrong with some groups of people that stay away from and refuse to engage in that which I do? I swear by Allah, I am the most knowledgeable of Allah among them, and I am the most fearful of Him. The Prophet ﷺ will always and forever be the perfect example for us. If he did something, we should not think that we can do better, we can do more. Just because we purposefully make something more intense than it needs to be does not necessit necessitate reward. But closely and keenly and diligently following the Prophet ﷺ, even in those situations where he took the easier road, that will necessitate reward. Secondly, making things difficult on yourself in matters of this life. Similar to the previous category, this is, when a this is when a person purposefully makes certain aspects of his or her daily life more difficult than it needs to be, simply for the sake of intensity in and of itself. On a hot summer day, psh, I don't need AC, I'm not a wimp, even though AC is available. At iftar time, huh, I'm not hungry, I don't need food, I'm strong already, even though food is available when carrying a large, heavy object that will probably strain their back. Tss, I don't need help from anybody, I can carry this thing all on my own, even though there is someone right there who offered to help three times already. These are just a few silly examples, but we see this all the time in people, wherein people are so afraid to expose their vulnerability to anyone, wherein people are so averse to letting anyone know that they have needs and weaknesses wherein people refuse to let anyone know that they need help, thus necessarily making things more difficult on themselves on purpose, for no reason. To give a deeper example that we see a lot today, when someone is struggling with their mental health and they say, I don't need counseling, I can handle this on my own. Believe it or not, this is an example of blame-worthy ta'asir. When a person deep down knows that they need help, but they choose the more difficult route, the more intense way, the more strong version, just for the sake of difficulty in and of itself, just for the sake of not wanting to make things easy, even though they may have the resources to do so. They want to appear tough. They want to appear strong. They want to appear intense and let everybody know that they do not need anybody's help to get through this life. But behaving like this is not the example of the Prophet ﷺ. If the Prophet ﷺ was presented with two options, one easier than the other, he would pick the easier option as long as the easier option was in no way sinful. 
as Aisha radiallahu anha said, if there is an easier option, that option is not sinful, and there is no extra reward or virtue that you would be missing out on in the more difficult option, go with the easier one. It is as simple as that in regards to this life and the hereafter. As long as you are staying away from sin and not shortchanging yourself on opportunities to get greater reward, go with the easier option. Thirdly, making things difficult on others in matters of religion. This is when a person does either of two things. One, when a person spreads false information about what is required in this religion, teaching others that Islam is again, more intense and taxing than it actually is. And two, when a person harshly and roughly corrects a person when he or she makes a mistake, or even worse, harshly and roughly correcting a person when he or she is not even making a mistake, but just doing something that is different from what the rough person is used to. The first manifestation of making things difficult on others in matters of religion is when a person goes out of their way to spread information that Islam is rigid and has no room for leniency and considering individual circumstances. When a person takes one viewpoint, one opinion, and declares anything and everything that deviates from that one single opinion, even slightly, to be wrong. When a person asserts that there is only one way to do things. When a person refuses to look at individual circumstances of the person who may come to them with a question and they just give them a blanket, one size fits all answer that may be detrimental for that person. For certain aspects of the religion, yes, there is only one way to do things. There is only one God. The Prophet ﷺ is his last and final messenger. There is no difference of opinion regarding that. But there are many details in which there is a ton of difference of opinion. This religion has a lot of wiggle room. This religion is designed to accommodate individual circumstances, different times and different places. The more a person seeks sacred knowledge and learns the ins and outs of this religion, the more that person understands that there is not always just one way to do things. Our scholarly tradition is rich and full of differing viewpoints, varying opinions. And this is what are, makes our tradition so rich. So when a person makes things difficult on others by asserting my way or the highway, this is what you have to do in this scenario. It doesn't matter how much hardship it causes you. You have to practice Islam like this or you're not doing it right. This is a problem that should be addressed. The second manifestation of making things difficult on others in matters of religion is, similarly to what we discussed last week, being harsh and rough when correcting the mistake of another, being rough and tough when teaching someone. And again, this problem is so much more disgusting and strange when the individual, the harsh person is trying to correct is not even making a mistake. He or she is just doing something different than what that person thinks is the right way. He or she may very well be following a different, legitimate and sound opinion on something, but the harsh person still rudely corrects them because they think, again, that there is only one way to do things. They think Islam is rigid and has no wiggle room and they impose that framework on other people. But if we look at the example of the Prophet ﷺ, we find time and time again multiple examples of the Prophet ﷺ being kind and gentle when correcting others. And that kindness and gentleness actually had a greater impact on the person and motivated them to keep coming back, keep improving, keep getting better at whatever it was that the Prophet ﷺ so kindly and gently corrected them on. Majority of the time, if a person is harsh when correcting another person, the other person is not going to take that correction seriously. They are going to brush it off, ignore it, because they do not trust the person who corrected them. Why should I listen to you, you big meanie? Right? If a person has genuine concern for a person and wants to advise them about something, 
it must be done kindly and gently if they actually want that person to listen and change. They actually want good for the person. They don't just want to display their power and might. It is less about what you say and more about how you say it. Fourthly and lastly, making things difficult on others in matters of this worldly life. This is when a person unnecessarily puts hardships and burdens upon another person simply because they have the power to do so. A boss demanding more overtime hours and cutting vacation days. A friend taking advantage of another person's willingness to pay for outings and giving rides. A family member that becomes unduly offended when someone cannot make it to a gathering. These are all examples of a person who makes life difficult for someone else. Sometimes it may not even be intentional. Sometimes that is just the way a person is and without knowing it, they are bringing burdens into another person's life. This is something that we should all be extremely cautious of. Take a magnifying glass and with a keen and sharp eye, examine your interactions and dealings with others. Ask yourself, am I doing anything, whether it is what I say, what I do, what I expect, etc.? Am I doing anything that is making this person's life more difficult in any possible way? Even if it is just the slightest inconvenience, am I causing anything burdensome on another human being? And if we are, then we must change things around. As Muslims, that cannot be who we are. We cannot be people who make the lives of others difficult. We should at the very least, bare minimum, not cause any difficulty. But what we should really strive for is to do the exact opposite. Be someone who lifts burdens and hardships off of others. Be someone who makes life easier from another person and removes their difficulties. By doing so, we will be embodying prophetic character and earn the rewards associated with making life easier for another person that we discussed in the last video. To close, let us look at some verses from the Qur'an and narrations of the Prophet ﷺ discussing ta'seer, making things difficult. In Surah Al-Baqarah, verse number 180, Allah says as part of a longer verse, يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ اللَّهُ يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرَ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرَ يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرَ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرَ Allah wants and intends ease for you. He does not want and intend difficulty for you. All right? Allah wants ease for you. He does not want difficulty for you. This is just a portion of a longer verse in which Allah is talking about fasting in the month of Ramadan. He says that if someone is sick or traveling, make up the days later. And then he says this, Allah wants ease for you. He does not want difficulty for you. Not only does this verse teach us about the unending kindness and gentleness that Allah has for us, but it also teaches us a huge lesson about how we must live our lives. If Allah does not want difficulty for us, how can we want difficulty for us? If Allah does not want difficulty for people, how can we want difficulty for the people? Allah wants this religion to be easy and doable for everyone. Who are we to go around making it hard, whether on ourselves or on others? How can we want something different than what Allah wants? And even worse, how can we implement and act upon something that Allah does not want, making things difficult? These are all questions to ask ourselves before we do something that makes life and this religion unnecessarily, for no reason, difficult for ourselves or for others. The companion Abu Musa radiallahu an said that whenever the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam would send someone out on a mission, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam would say, Bashiru wa la tu nafiru wa yassiru wa la tu asiru. Give good news and glad tidings and do not drive people away. Make things easy and do not make things difficult. 
This was the Prophet's advice that he would give someone when he would send them out on a mission to teach, to spread Islam, to meet different tribes and different peoples. When the Prophet would send a companion out to accomplish some task that involved interacting with others, this was his advice. Give people good news. Do not drive them away. Tell them about paradise and all the reward that is in store for them. Bring them in. Draw them close. Tell them that which will make them happy. Invite them in a manner that will actually make them want to come. Make things easy. Do not make things difficult. As we talked about last week, a Muslim's job on this earth is to make things easy. We are muyassirin. That is what we were sent as. We were sent as muyassirin, as the Prophet ﷺ has said. That is just how we do things. That is how we invite others. That is how we keep others. That is how we maintain a strong and united community. Trying our best to make things easy and refraining from making things difficult is prophetic advice. It is the default best way to deal with people and it is the default most conducive method to making our lives and their lives better. May Allah help us to be muyassirin, people who make things easy on others. And may He protect us from being muassirin, people who make things difficult on others. And may He bless us with furqan, with the ability to distinguish between right and wrong, and with the ability to know how best to deal with others in their individual circumstances. Ameen. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala khairi khalqihi Muhammad, walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله